right. Well, praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm thankful for his goodness and his mercy. And I'm glad you guys came out today. This is our faith and healing class. Welcome all those who are joining us online again. This is a class where we feed our spirits on the anointed word of Christ. And our faith grows exponentially because of that. And then we learn how to overcome. We lay hold. We're not moved by circumstances. And uh, we've been over the past couple of days uh, and going forward learning uh, how to be led by the Spirit of God. You know, this is, uh, you know, I, I've perceived in my own heart that this is something that the church is going to need to know and, 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 and be very proficient in in these last days. Because we're going to encounter things that we never encountered before. And without the guidance of the Holy Ghost and us fine-tuning our ears to hear him, we could miss it. We could miss it, and, uh, and we don't want to miss it. And it's not God's will that we miss it. It's his will that we walk in the fullness of every blessing that he's promised to us in his word. So that's what we're, uh, that's what we're endeavoring to hear from the Spirit about and, uh, and learn in these classes. So get your Bible. Get something to take some notes. And uh, let's pray together and let's release faith that uh, for, for anointing, for unction, and for revelation knowledge to be imparted to us as we touch this this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to study your word. Father, your word is life. It is truly an anchor to our souls. It, it, it grounds us, it tethers us in the storms of life. And when difficulties come, we have your holy word, your holy word, Father, and you always honor it. And Father, we recognize that power is available always. We release faith to plug into that power and receive what you have already provided for us. And so as we study this today, Father, I ask you for unction, for anointing, Lord, for revelation knowledge and impartation of truth. Lord, give us ears to hear, hearts to receive. Holy Ghost, we look to you. We yield to you. We recognize you. We acknowledge you. You're our advocate, our helper, our quickener, our strengthener. We ask that you teach us today. Show us. Open the eyes of our heart that we could see clearly and apply these principles to our lives. We want to hear from you, and we want to learn how to instantly obey. And Father, we thank you for it. May you bring glory to yourself in this. And may people be brought into a closer relationship with you. And those who don't know you, may they see you in this and desire that. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, let's start off. I get into preaching right away, and then, and then we don't do our scriptures. <laughs> it happened yesterday. But uh, so let's do that this morning. I want to uh, read our Ephesian prayers, right? And then the one in Colossians. And uh, we know this isn't a ritualistic thing. It's not a religious thing. It's a faith thing. It's speaking God's word. It's confessing his word. And confession is saying the same thing, right? So we, is it important that we say the same thing that God says? Yes, that we agree with him. Do we have to understand it to agree with him? No, we don't. That's what faith is all about. We do it because we trust him and we do it in faith. So that's why we've been reading these scriptures and the Lord has been opening the eyes of our heart. He has. And we've been seeing things and receiving revelation knowledge. So let's do that again today in faith as we pray these prayers together. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning in verse 17. Uh, Paul is praying here. He says, I pray to you, the glorious Father, the God of my Lord Jesus Christ that you would give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation as I come to know you better. Then I will have deeper insight. I will know the confidence that you want me to have and the glorious wealth that your people will inherit. I will also know the unlimited greatness of your power as it works with might and strength for me, a believer. You worked with that same power in Christ when you brought him back to life and gave him the honored position the one next to you, the Father, on the heavenly throne. Jesus is far above all rulers, authorities, powers, lords, and any kind of government, <laughs> and all other names that can be named, not only in this present world, but also in the world to come. You have put everything under the control of him concerning the church. You made him the head of everything for the good of the church. The church is his body and completes him as he fills everything in every way. 
Glory to God. That's happening for us, isn't it? It is happening for us. So let's flip over to Ephesians now chapter 3, uh, beginning in verse 16. Beginning in verse 16, and we all know that, uh, that this was not written. It all flowed together, not written in chapter and verse. But for our benefit, to, uh, it, it helps us, so I could tell you to go to Ephesians chapter 3. So uh, Paul, again, he's praying here, beginning in verse 16. He's saying, I'm asking you, God, to give me a gift from the wealth of your glory. I pray that you would give me your inner strength and power through your spirit, that Christ will live in me through faith. I also pray that love may be the ground into which I sink my roots and on which I have my foundation. Is it important to walk in love? Is it, it, it's, it's vital. You know, we've taught on that, but it is so important that we walk in love. Unconditional, the God kind of love. Uh, because our faith is which, how we receive from God, right? Through our faith. But our faith works. It's powered by our love. So it's important that we walk in love. And it's important, and I'm saying that right now because it's important to not allow a heart of bitterness grow in us even concerning the things that are taking place in the world today. You know, it, it's easy for us to uh, become critical and judgmental because most of what we're seeing violates our own conscience. But we cannot grow bitter towards that. We need to channel that, that, that opposition on our knees in prayer. And seeking and praying, and and that's I don't know if you remember this, but uh, I want to say this several months back, the Lord and I even taught a little bit about it, but the Lord spoke to me about uh, as believers, we shouldn't even be discussing what's going on in the world. I mean, if we want to be really scriptural about it and be you know sticklers for the word, uh, we shouldn't even be talking about those kind of things. It, 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 uh, Peter told us. Paul said it in Timothy, that these things shouldn't even be mentioned among believers, but rather humble ourselves, pray, seek God's face, and, uh, and, and he'll heal our land. So, uh, but but I, that, translate in, that translates into walking in love, walking in love to one another. You know, I believe that the greatest... Uh, well, the greatest tool that the enemy uses within the church or the body of Christ is division, strife and division over little insignificant things that, that, uh, that we allow ourselves, our flesh, to get offended over. And, uh, and it takes discipline and it takes practice, but love never fails. So if you never want to fail, walk in love. Walk in love. Walk in love. Does it seem like someone took advantage of you? Are we being mistreated? You very well may be. But let me tell you something. Justice and vindication comes from God. And at the right time, it will it'll work out on your, on your behalf. But if you'll stay walking in love, your faith will work. Your prayers will be answered, right? And, uh, and, and the enemy won't be able to get a foothold. Because with strife, the Bible says, is every other evil work. You know, you, you get strife in a church, and, and you won't see a move of God no way, shape, or form. You know, it's nothing but division, confusion, and every evil work. And, uh, you know, that's some of the main things that as a pastor and, and learning these principles, we can't allow strife. We cannot allow strife. And, in fact, if you see it, you need to call it out. <laughs> you need to just, in a loving way, you know what I mean? Listen, we don't want to give place to the enemy because if we yield to strife, we're giving place to the enemy, right? So uh, uh, that's one thing I, I, I will not, uh, as the under shepherd here, uh, allow that to happen, you know, and, uh, and because it's, 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 it's scripture and it's important. And uh, we want a move of God, right? We want his anointing. We want his blessing and his spirit in this place. So we have to walk in love. And, uh, and love needs to be the foundation. It needs to be the foundation. We have to truly understand that our faith will not work. Our prayers will not be answered if we have any bitterness. And that can we give place to strife in our life. Is everybody okay with that? I kind of got, you know, quiet in the Pentecostal church here. But... <laughs> The truth is still the truth. 
We need to walk in love. And, I'm, and listen, I preach to myself. You know, there, there's, we have plenty of opportunity to yield to that. But when we don't and we put our flesh under, we are being pleasing to God. It gives him the right. It gives him the access to work on our behalf. And, and fear not, he sees. And that's not to say, oh, you're crazy. You're not being mistreated. No, you very well may be, be mistreated. But God sees all that. Yeah. Was Jesus mistreated? Was he wrongly accused? Was he mocked and made fun of? Was he beaten for no, you know, unjustly, innocently? He was. He was innocent the whole time. But he knew the reason why. And, uh, and, and, and he responded in love. Even on the cross, in torturous pain, hanging there with spikes driven through him. That's the only thing that was holding him on that wood. Think about that. He wasn't hanging up there with rope. It was spikes, spikes, railroad ties, just spikes holding him on there. And he even at that point said from the cross, forgive them, forgive them for they really do not know and understand what they're doing. See, that's a, that's a love that, that, is, that is powerful, powerful, powerful. So stay on God's side. We want our prayers to be answered, right? Let's finish this. So this way, with all of God's people, I will be able to understand how wide, long, high, and deep your love is. I will know Christ's love, which goes far beyond any knowledge. I am praying this so that I may be completely filled with you, Father God. Glory belongs to you, whose power is at work in me. By your power, you can do infinitely more than I can ask or imagine. Glory belongs to you in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time and eternity. Amen. You know, when I think about uh, when, I, when we're reading these prayers, uh, I'm just quickened on the inside that Paul, you know, Paul had an encounter with Christ. Paul was an enemy of the church at one time, wasn't he? And uh and Paul had an experience with Christ that changed his life forever. I mean, Paul's ambition was to bring Christians and martyr them and throw them in prison. That was his goal. That's what he was wanting to do. That's what he strived to do, right? So uh, it's, it's no coincidence that Paul is talking about the love of Christ here because there's some things that he knew. But how do we learn? How do we learn? We learn through submission, we learn through humility, right? And, uh, and as we do that, we, we allow the help, the grace, God's help and sustaining power to change us, to change us. You know, God could take a, a person who has a heart of stone and turn it into a heart of love if we'll, if, we'll, if we'll yield to him, if we'll yield to him. And it's so important for us to understand that, that our faith, our faith. Listen, all Mark eleven twenty three and twenty four. We love those scriptures, and uh, and and we stand on them about speaking and saying. But we always leave off verse twenty five, the very next verse. In fact, before we get into this Colossians prayer, let's just look at this for a minute because I believe the Holy Ghost wants to say something today about this. I do. Um, Mark eleven. In uh, 23 and 24, let's see here, I'm right there. Mark 11. I know it, but I want us to see it ourselves. Turn there. And again, this is no coincidence that this next verse follows our big faith scripture, Right? Mark eleven twenty three. 23, we, we know the story. Jesus was teaching the disciples uh, about faith. He told them, have faith in God. And it was a story of the fig tree, right? And, uh, and we see what happened there. And he used that as an illustration to teach them that you can have what you say in line with God's word. And we always end with 24. And, when we, and we skip verse 25. But I believe the Holy Ghost which is what we're teaching, right, about being led by the Spirit, wants us to see something here. Because this is the first place we need to check in our lives. If our prayers seem like they're being hindered, 
uh, we need to check ourselves. And I don't mean we don't have to go through a list of 50 years. You'll, you know, it'll take you literally 50 seconds if you go to check yourself. You'll know right away who you have ought against or who you still buried the hatchet, but you left the handle sticking up. You understand what I'm saying? Just in case you need to grab it. I'll forgive them, but oh man, I don't forget what they did. You know, and, uh, and uh, we need to let those things go. They're hindering our life. They're hindering our prayers. They're hindering our receiving from God. And it has nothing to do with God. He's wanting to pour it out. It has to do with us, an act of our own will, an act of our will. Uh, so Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart in God's unlimited power, but believes that what he says is going to take place, it will be done for him in accordance with God's will. Now, we know that. We live that. We believe that. Are you 100% sold out on that? Yes, we are. Verse 24, for this reason, I am telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer, and again, in accordance with God's will, uh, you can't pray that you get your neighbor's house because theirs is nicer than yours, okay? That doesn't work. <laughs> That's not God's will. That's not in accordance with God's will, so, or their truck, or whatever it may be, or husband or wife for that matter, right? In accordance with God's will, believe with confidence and trust that you have received them, and they will be given to you. Now, interesting to note there, is there a time stamp put on that, when that's going to happen? No, there's not. Some things will take longer than others. And why? Because it's always in due season. God knows the right time. You know, if we ever receive some of the things that we wanted now, God knows where it would have led us to. It could have been a disaster for us. So God knows and we trust him. But verse 25, so we know all this, we're believing, we're receiving, we're speaking it. We know it's coming to us in accordance with his will. Verse 25, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, drop the issue, let it go, so that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you your transgressions and wrongdoings against him and others. But if you do not forgive... Neither will your Father in heaven forgive your transgressions. Do we hear what Jesus is saying here? How often do we just skim right over that? Think about what I'm saying. Listen, the Holy Ghost is wanting to show us something here this morning. There's some nuggets of truth that's going to unlock the blessing of God into people's lives. I, I, I know it. I know this. Yes. It is. Yes, it is. Forgive those. Forgive us our trespasses. Yes. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. That's right. Listen, there's parables that Jesus, the rich, not, not the rich young ruler, but the other one who had the servants, who uh, this guy owed, you know, uh, millions of dollars, Right. And, and in our terms, okay? And he, uh, he went and pleaded with the master saying, look, please forgive my, you know, I, I don't have it. I'll work to do whatever I can. And the master had mercy on him and compassion and erased his debt for him. And then this same guy went and dragged his friend in who owed him $5 and said, take everything he had. And his friend pleaded with him. He said, man, please, you know I'm in a bad way right now. I'll give you the $5. He's like, no, take everything he has, throw him in jail till he pays me. Do you see such a heart of bitterness? And there's no, this is exactly what Jesus is talking about. This is exactly what's talking about. And unfortunately, we don't tie it in to verse 23 and 24. We end at 24 and think, woohoo, I could have whatever I say. And people are not having close to what they say because he, Jesus specifically. Now, why? Why? It's, this was inspired. He was being led by the Holy Ghost. Why? After he goes through this whole discourse, teaching them about faith. 
The whole chapter, the beginning, was a faith lesson, a, 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 an object lesson. He spoke to a fig tree, and it withered up. He tells them, have faith in God. You can do exactly what I did. But then here's the qualifier that we leave off. We leave off. The qualifier is this, whenever wasn't important. It had to be important. Watch why he qualified everything that he just taught them with this closing statement, if you will. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, if someone has wronged you and you just have a hard time letting it go and you're having a hard time getting past it, if people have done you wrong, if you have done others wrong and you're hardening your heart saying it's not my fault, it's just the way it is. He's saying, the master's saying, when you stand praying, if you have any of that in your heart, forgive him. Drop the issue, let it go. Let it go so that your father who is in heaven will also forgive you and your transgressions and wrongdoings. But if you do not, do we want forgiveness? Do we want mercy? Do we want, when we've done wrong, do we want mercy? Yes, we want mercy. We want mercy and we want it quick, right? We want it quick. So when, when, when we're praying, if we're having, if we're not getting what we're speaking, we need to make sure we don't stop at 24. Go on to 25. And it'll take all of 30 seconds for you to see exactly where you're missing it. And that's the job of the Holy Ghost, to show us. Now, at that point, we can harden our heart and do without, or we can humble ourselves and get all the help we need and have our, pray our prayers answered. This is important. This is a nugget of truth that will change a lot for a lot of people. It really will. Whenever you stand praying, whenever you're praying and doing all these faith things and speaking to your mountain, because the truth is this, how could we be in faith? How could we be in faith when our heart convicts us for thoughts and actions that we have towards others? You can't be. You, and, and don't you think Jesus knew that? Don't you think he knew that? Which is why he, he qualified it all with saying, now here's how this is going to work. If you want these things to be operating in your life, and I just showed you that they do, you're going to have to walk in love. You're going to have to walk in the God kind of love. You're going to have to forgive, drop it, let it go, so that your Father, who is in heaven, will forgive you. But if you do not forgive, then he, he doesn't just leave it there. But if you choose not to forgive, do not think that you're going to be able to ask the Father to forgive you. Now, we never, nobody teaches that. <laughs> nobody really teaches that because it's a very sobering thing because it puts the responsibility clearly on us, and we would never think, well, what do you mean God would forgive me? He's such a loving God. Well, let's not add to it or take away. What does it say? What does it say? Of course God will forgive you. But what does he require of us before he forgives us? He brought us near by his blood while we were in sin. And he made the, he made the redemptive reality possible for us. But now, now he requires something of us. He requires us, if you want to tap in in faith, and then there's so many scriptures. Now, you, now when we study this, uh, I've always said this, that Scripture interprets itself with other Scriptures. Two or three, rightly dividing the Word of God, right? Rightly dividing. And, and, and it can't just be in one spot because you can't divide one by one, right? Uh, in, 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 when you rightly divide the, the Word, you see in other verses that faith works by love, doesn't it? We just read in, in Ephesians that, uh, and, and we'll look at it in the, in the New King James, but 
we read that faith, and we understand that our faith works according to our love. Now, are we being led this morning? We are. We're saying what the Lord knows we need to hear this morning. And, uh, and, and so this is important for us to get results in our praying. And, uh, and make some minor adjustments. And you know what? The whole thing takes faith. And it takes submission and it takes humility to, to say, you know what, Lord? I'm going to trust you. It hurts what somebody did to me. But you said that if I want my prayers answered and I want to be forgiven, I need to, I need to forgive others. And I need to drop the issue and let it go. And in doing so, I'm giving it to you now. I'm casting it on you. And you told me that that kind of love will never fail. And I know that justice and vindication will come from you at the right time. But for now, I'm giving it to you. I want my prayers to be answered, and I want my faith to work. I want my faith to work. That's a picture of humility. That's a picture of humility. Because your flesh is going to say, you're crazy. And he's going to bring up, every, your mind's going to go through the whole thing, every little thing, how it happened. And, and let me caution you on this. When you're tempted to think about it, don't give place to it. Because if you do, you're going to start talking about it. And then you're going to start digging up things. And before you know it, you're going to have an issue again. Let it go. Forgive it. When, 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 if, has anyone ever done anything wrong in here? Yes, we have. When we ask God to forgive us, do we want him to forget it and never bring it up to us again? We absolutely do. We do. Some shameful things, some things that we knew were, God, please, I, I want your mercy on my life, the gift of repentance. Forgive me. He says that he is faithful and just to forgive us and to remember, cleanse us and remember our sins no more. So isn't that how we should act? We, we, we can't yield to that. I'm telling you what will happen. I've seen it happen in my own life, you know, when you start feeding it a little bit and then you begin to think about it and then all of a sudden another story pops into your mind. You're like, oh, man, and then before you know it, the devil has stolen your joy, you're yielding to strife, and we give him place. And, and more than that, more than that, what you're believing God for is being hindered. It's being hindered. Jesus said what he meant and he meant what he said. When you're standing, praying, if you have any ought against your brother's sister or anything else, forgive him. Forgive them. Drop the issue. Let it go. So that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you your transgressions and wrongdoings. And falling short of his glory, right? It's important. Friends, it's important. This is an answer to... Uh, to receiving from God. And, uh, and strife comes in such deceptive little ways. Because you know what happens when, we, when, when we're tempted to do that? Then comes the false reasoning and the justification and the reasoning why. And, and, and we don't think that we're wrong. And the enemy's right there to tell you, absolutely, you're a saint. You're not wrong. Those people are devilish. He justifies your deception that he brought to you. That's exactly what he does. We can't give any, we can't give place to that. Remember I said we don't reason with the devil, we resist the devil. And if it's contrary to what God's word says, we have to dismiss it as poison. Because that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. So, let's finish these uh, Let's finish these prayers here. Glory to God. Love needs to be the ground into which we sink our roots and on which we have our foundation. And we just seen in Scripture what God thinks about it. And my goodness, we haven't even scratched the surface on the subject of love. Go over to 1 John and you want to talk about love. You'll see everything there is in what, what the Holy Ghost spoke through him about love how we could say we love God, but we don't love our brother. Now, again, these are scriptures that we just kind of, we want to talk about the, the goods. Let's get the good stuff. But there's so many things that we are not uh, heeding to that are hindering us from receiving. 
You know, and they're, they're, they're minor adjustments. And the biggest adjustment to be made is an act of humility. An act of humility. You know, being humble. Being humble is not a weak characteristic. In fact, it's one of the strongest character traits a person can possess. Proverbs tells us any fool can run his mouth off and blah, 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 and, 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 and an argument and ensues and insist on their own way. Fools, that's what fools do. But he said, a wise person, a strong person, knows how to possess themselves and keep their mouth shut. When they are being wrongly accused or wrongly uh, uh, talked about or any of those things. So being humble is... Uh, is one of the greatest and strongest attributes that we can have. Humility. I mean, what does God think of pride? What does God think about people who get so, um, so entrenched in their own way that they shut anything else out that the Holy Ghost is trying to tell them because they're right, and I will stand up for what I believe is right. And I know that I was wrong, and there's no way I'm going to apologize for something that I didn't do. Did, what do you think God thinks of that? It, 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 it's He resists that person. Think about being resisted by God. The devil got thrown out of heaven for that same thing. Same thing. Now, does God see it if you're being wrongly accused and, 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 and slandered and all those kind of things? He absolutely sees it. He absolutely sees it. Whether another person on this planet ever notices it, God does. And he will justify us in due time. But we have to do it his way. We have to do it his way. We need to trust him. We need to humble ourselves, and we need to ask for his help and strength, which he'll give to us to get through it, to overcome it. All right? There's a scripture I want us to look at once we uh, finish this Colossian prayer. But uh, this is the direction. This is all has to do with being led by the Spirit, though. This has to, be, this has to do with uh, listening to that still, small voice on the inside. Because I'm going to tell you this right now. That when you're tempted to yield to strife, when you're tempted, when your back is up and someone just lashes out at you, people that we love, that happens all the time, um, uh, when it happens, you're tempted immediately to, mm, and say, what, you know, and try to defend yourself. God is telling us that we don't have to, and that we shouldn't. We shouldn't. We shouldn't. Love does not insist on being right. Even if it is right, it doesn't insist on its own way. It also keeps no record of any wrong ever done to it. I'm thankful to God. Aren't you glad I didn't write this? I'm glad I didn't write it. But God wrote it. It's his word. It's just as much his word as by his stripes you're healed. It's his word. And it needs to be obeyed just like the confession of our faith. And we're foolish and deceived if we think that we can circumvent those things and still speak his word in faith. But we, don't, we can't pick and choose what we, what we can obey and what we need to obey and what we don't want to obey. The, the, the Bible says that those who are guilty of one point of the law, one, in one point, and of course we're not under the law anymore, but we are under his grace and his help, and, and we are to obey Right? He told us that. But if we break one point, you're, you're, you're guilty of the whole thing. So it's important. It's so important for us that we humble ourselves and, and, and recognize that when you're being tempted to retaliate or to defend yourself and, and you know, uh, a soft answer turns away wrath. Right? Right? But how many know that sometimes even a soft answer will not diffuse another hot-headed person? So what do you do? You back off and you walk away and you go pray. And don't say anything else because it's only going to lead to more strife. But I'm saying that because I know this, that when you're tempted to respond or to react, 
you're going to be quickened on the inside. If you're reading the word, it's going to come up on the inside of you. And nobody can say that that, oh, that doesn't happen to me. You're lying. <laughs> it definitely happens to you. You may not yield to it. You may not, you know, you may have been grown so callous to it, which we've been talking about, that you don't recognize it anymore. But initially, there's a something that like puts the brakes on. And you know, at that point, I'm, I, I shouldn't, I don't need to do this. I shouldn't do this. But. And then right with that comes the enemy with false reasons. But they need to know. I mean, how many times are they going to keep doing this to me? They need to know that how they're speaking is wrong. Says who? Says who? Says us that we need to let them know that the way they're talking is wrong? Friend, listen, I know this is completely opposite of what the flesh wants to do. But I want to tell you something. You cannot figure out spiritual things in your natural mind. They, they, they supersede that. And we are either going to believe God and we're going to trust him with everything or we're not going to trust him with any of it. That, that, that's honestly what it comes down to. We cannot reason. We cannot reason in our mind and say, well, you know what? They've done that 50,000 times to me. And I think now is the time that I need to tell them. Says who? What does the word say? Now I know. <laughs> I know people are thinking, are you serious? Yes, I'm very serious. I'm very serious. Um, I'm not telling you what to do. Choose what you want to do, but I know what I'm doing. And if I want to, if I want to have the blessings of God operating in my life, I'm going to do it God's way. I'm going to do it God's way. I can't follow blueprints for something else and expect to get what God said is going to show up. Right? You have to yield. You have to yield. Is the Holy Spirit doing that for our benefit when he quickens us? Yes, he is. Is he trying to bring us to a better place? Yes, he is. Is he trying to speed up the recovery in your life? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Is the enemy trying to make it harder for you? Yes, he is. Is he trying to make it longer? Is he trying to make things worse for you? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And is worth letting someone know that they're wrong, which they're not going to agree with you anyway, and they're probably going to do it again? Is that worth forfeiting obedience and blessing from God? No way, no how. It's supernatural. Friends, it's supernatural, but it's doable. Because if it wasn't, it wouldn't be in his word. It wouldn't be in the word. We have, to, we have to listen, follow what he's saying, and obey it. And obey it. And, uh, and so, uh, let's read our Colossians chapter 1. But humility, this is an act of humility. This is an act of humility. And we know that God gives his help and grace to the humble. Doesn't he? I want all the help I can get. I don't want to be resisted by God. Colossians chapter 1, Paul's continuing to pray here. Beginning in verse 9, he says, For this reason, I have not stopped praying about this. I ask you, God, to fill me with the knowledge of your will, your word, through every kind of spiritual wisdom and insight. I ask this so that I will live the kind of life that proves that I belong to you, Lord. Then I will want to please you in every way as I grow in producing every kind of good work by this knowledge about you. I ask you to strengthen me by your glorious might with all the power that I need to patiently endure and overcome everything with joy. I also thank you, Father, for you have made me able to share the light, which is what you want me to inherit. You, Father God, have rescued me from the power of darkness and you brought me into the kingdom of your Son, whom you love. Glory be to God. So, faith works by love, right? Our faith works by love. We receive from God according to our faith. And our, our faith is based on what we believe, right? And... All that's based on knowing the truth. Faith comes to us by hearing the anointed word of God. But I, I, we got into this whole subject about love because love needs to be the foundation. Pliable, gentle, peaceable people. 
that God can work with, that, that, that water rolls off our back like off a duck's back. Problems don't bother me. People could say whatever they feel like about me. And if it's not true, and even if it is true, you know, if it's true and I did something wrong, then I need to, make, I need to get it right. But if it's not true, I don't even have to give it a second thought. I'd let the Lord know about it. He sees it anyway. And I humbly say, God, I'm going to do it your way. You said that whatsoever things I desire when I pray, believe I receive them and I shall have them. And when I'm praying, you said that if I have any ought against anyone to drop the matter and let it go so that you will forgive me and my prayers not be hindered. That we should tie right into Mark 11:24, Right? And he said, because if you uh, want your father to forgive you, then you need to forgive others. And I mean truly letting it go. And you know what letting it go means? That when you're tempted to think about it again, it doesn't mean you're not going to be tempted to think about it again. It's when you're tempted to think about it again, or if the subject matter comes up, you shut the door on it. You say, Father, this is yours. This has nothing to do with me anymore. I I'm trusting you on this. I trust you, and I know that love never fails. And I know that my faith in receiving from you is, uh, is powered by my love. So I thank you that the love of God is shed abroad and quickened to me in my heart by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. Now, we, um, I can't believe time slipped away already, but... Uh, we, we started this, if you're tuning in for the very first time, we started um, all of our messages. If you go to our website, AbundantGraceChurch.com, you can uh, view all of our services, our Sunday morning services, our Wednesday evening service, and of course, all our faith and healing class. I would encourage you to go back. We started now on the subject of being led by the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and it's important because we've led up to this point where we're at today and, uh, and how the Lord has quickened to us that in these last days we need to hear his voice. And we are his sheep, and he said, my sheep always hear my voice, and they follow it, and they follow it. They follow it. They, it he goes on to say, they're not going to follow the voice of a stranger because they don't recognize that voice. But again, we have to train our hearing to recognize his voice so that we're not deceived by the voice of a stranger, right? Then we got into the, the, the subject of um, being calloused, not being uh, uh, di disobedient when the Holy Ghost prompts us to do something, right? We went over that, uh, being trained, being sensitive, not reasoning, but immediately, even in the things that seem so small and insignificant. Now, I'm just recapping quick here, but again, go back, listen to all of them. Uh, it, it'll help you, and it's going to help you in your walk now in these last days for sure. But we left off yesterday, and now we tied it in today about the subject of walking in love and how the Holy Ghost will quicken to us. Now, do you remember what we spoke about yesterday? Anyone? Well, okay, led by the Spirit. <laughs> but that's a safe answer. Anyway, specifically being led by the Spirit yesterday, what, we, what, what did we go over? What scripture? I'm, I'm not trying to trick anyone. I just want to make sure you're listening. Well, we did. We started with Ephesians talking about the sword of the Spirit, right? Matthew 21. What, what about Luke chapter 4? Luke chapter 4. We, we, we read about how Jesus while he was being tempted in the wilderness, used the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, right? When, when Ephesians six seventeen says, and take up the sword of the Spirit, it says, which is the Word of God. That's this Word that we need to know. And we, got, we went on to say about uh, that Word, Word in that verse in Ephesians six seventeen is translated as rhema which means a word from the Holy Ghost, a quickened word, a quickened word for that specific thing. And when we read through Luke chapter 4, we saw how the enemy came to tempt Jesus and, uh, and how Jesus every time received a rhema word, a quickened word that came up and he said, it is written. And he told him when he said, uh, you know, if you're hungry, you're the son of God. Why don't you just turn these stones into bread? And Jesus said, it is written. 
And what did he do? He took out the sword of the Spirit. And he took that, that rhema word and he said, It is written, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth. And then again, we know that Jesus, uh, that Satan tempted him again, saying, If you will bow down to me, showed him all the kingdoms of the world. If you'll bow down to me, uh, you, you, I'll give all this to you. You know what? When I think, I just thought about this for a minute, that clearly Satan didn't know the end of the story. By tempting Jesus with all the kingdoms of the, of the earth, um, they thought that if he knew, if he knew what the outcome was going to be, if he knew what the outcome was going to be, why would he tempt him with, with the kingdoms of the world? And he is the son of God. You know, and I, you know he tried to get him to yield to a lie, to deception. Uh, but again, how did Jesus defeat him? With a quickened word from God. Now, all this is what we're studying, the subject of being led by the Holy Spirit. Being led by the Holy Spirit. When, when we're in the word, okay, the word is what the Holy Ghost is going to bring up out of us. A, a quickened rhema word to deal with the situation that's at hand. But if we're been too busy or too, uh, far, uh, we, we haven't been uh, listening, and we've grown callous, when we need to hear it, we're going to have a hard time hearing it. And we're going to rely on the arm of the flesh, and that never produces anything good. But Jesus, and I was showing us this, had a rhema word. And he said, you know, you'll worship the Lord your God and him only. Right? And him only. And, uh, and then... And then he says, goes up to him and he says, uh, well, if you're the son of God, then why don't you throw yourself off the pinnacle of this temple? And he quoted, the devil quoted scripture to him. He said, he quoted Psalm 91. He said, because doesn't it say that he gives his angels charge over you and they will gird you up and protect you? And, uh, and so what did Jesus say? Again, another quickened word. He said, it is also written. Also, it's written that you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And then it says the enemy left. But do you see the battle went on there? The battle went on, and it happens with us too. But as we continue to, 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 to use the sword of the Spirit, God's Word being prompted and quickened by the Holy Ghost. Remember, we said yesterday, He's our advisor. He's here to do that job for us, to show us exactly what to do and how to do it. And, uh, but we need to be sensitive and we need to quick, be quick to obey it. But as we take the sword of the Spirit out and use that, we, do, we deal that, that, that fatal blow to the enemy in resistance and he flees. And then he tries to regroup and comes back some other way. But we continue fighting the fight of faith. We continue listening and, and, and yielding to the Holy Ghost when he quickens us and prompts us to do that. And today we, took, we spoke, and we're going to close now, but we spoke about that subject pertaining to walking in love because he'll also quicken you the same way to, to uh, walk in love, to not yield to strife. When we have opportunity uh, and this happens all the time. When we have the opportunity presents itself to yield to that, we need to look on the inside and, and, and trust God instead. Follow what the Holy Ghost. You know, uh, there's, a, there's another story in the Bible that comes up to mind uh, just now about how Jesus received a quickened word from the Holy Ghost concerning the situation at hand. And it's the story of the woman caught in adultery. Right, And it, it, I just thought of this because uh, um, Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer, communing with his Father. Right, We are to do the same thing. And, uh, and, and when we do that, it causes us to be more in tune to him. And as we pray in the Holy Ghost, it makes us our, our, our hearing that much more fine-tuned to his voice. But when, when, when the woman was caught in adultery, and you know, we know the story, and, and, uh, and, and they wanted to, they said, what do you say? The law says that blah, 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 blah. Now, Jesus didn't just spout something off to him, did he? What does the scripture say? What does the story say? He stooped down on the ground 
And he started writing something in the sand. He was getting a rhema word. <laughs> I believe so. I believe so. And he stood back up. And he said, yes, that's right. That's what the, uh, the law does say that. But I say to you, who, he here, who's standing here today to condemn this woman that is without any sin in their life. Anybody here without sin, you can heave the very first stone. And they all looked at him like, are you kidding me? Now, who can argue with that? Because they all knew their sinful evil, wicked ways. But do you see how a word from the Holy Ghost can change a whole situation? And that's what's so important. Then he stooped down again and he wrote again. And as he looked, every, all the accusers, they all dropped their stones and walked away. And, uh, and then he looked at her and said, daughter, where's your accusers? And uh, he said, you know what? <clears throat> There is no one here to accuse you. He said, and I, won't, I don't accuse you either. But then he said, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Right? And that's a whole other teaching in and of itself. But very important. Very important. But I, I just shared that with you. and We can close with that. We're going to pray. Because the importance of being led by the Spirit. Jesus taught precept and example of how to do it. Right? And, uh, and we see that in Scripture. And uh, if he can, so can we. And if we will, we'll get the results that he gets. It's not a matter of, uh, well, we got to work up to this thing. It's a matter of humility, submission and humility to God, to trusting him, to remaining sensitive to what the Holy Ghost is leading us to do. And, you know, and then I think of another story just now in Scripture that, uh, and that's the Holy Ghost, that uh, about the centurion. You know, the centurion. What do we see in that? We see humility. We see humility in that whole story. In fact, the subject, and I've taught on this before, the subject of faith is not mentioned until the very last verse. Now, people think that's a story of faith when it's really a story of humility. But you cannot separate faith and humility, right? Because it takes humility to trust someone else's leading, doesn't it? The enemy will want us to think that we know better. We don't know better. We don't know better. We may know better than some people, but we don't know better than the Holy Ghost. So we need to, and I'll end with that, we need to practice, 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 train, train, train to hear and obey the voice of the Spirit of God on the inside of us the Holy Ghost. Amen? And I've given us principles how we can train ourselves to be more sensitive. And the number one way is obey every time you hear it. Every time you hear it. And you'll become, it'll become a habit of listening to it and obeying it. And man, we'll eat the fruit of that. It'll be wonderful. It'll be wonderful. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. Lord, we thank you for quickening to us your rhema word, Father. A, a quickening, powerful word that has taught us today, that has brought light and confidence into us, Father. We thank you that we're not just hearers, but we're doers of your word. We're doers of your word. And as we do it, we get the results that you promised us in your word. But we hold fast to our confession of faith, and we live this life and walk it out in faith according to your will. Father, we'll walk in love. We'll commit to following hard after you. And we trust the Holy Ghost to quicken us, to lead us, to strengthen us, and to show us the way. We ask for your help, Father, as we humble ourselves, we receive your grace. Father, may you bring glory to yourself. You deserve all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for coming out. Uh, remember, tomorrow we'll be back here again at 1030 for our faith and healing class. Have a great afternoon.